Hi everyone, welcome to VRSA Academy. We are learning CTS related concepts and we have already visited few basic concepts of CTS such as CTS algorithms and CTS power dissipation which we discussed in the previous video only. And in this lecture, let us start understanding about clock getting checks in the design. Before we start discussing further, these are the topics which we have discussed in the previous video. To summarize, we have talked about CTS algorithms, CTS targets, timings, challenges such as power dissipation in the clock tree. To solve the problem of power dissipation, we discussed that it can be controlled to some extent with the use of clock gates. We also concluded that active high clock gates will let the signal pass through if gating input is high and active low means it will let the signal pass through if gating input is low. Let us take an example to understand clock gating checks. You can see that there is an AND cell here in the gating cell so that means it is an active high clock gating cell. Why it is active high? Because whenever this high occurs on A pin of this gating signal, so that means that it will open up and it will allow the clock to propagate through. So your CLKB will propagate only when you and your A pin at this gating cell gets high. So for a positive edge triggered logic, since this is all a positive edge triggered logic, it implies that rising edge on the gating signal this this gating signal that is on a pin it should occur during the inactive period of the clock so the check here is that you should have rise signal that is active high signal or you can say that logic one should occur at inactive period of the clock so inactive period means whenever your b is low so your b should be low B should be low when your A is going on logic 1. So when A is transiting from 0 to 1, your B should be 0. We will understand through this uh, with the help of waveform also. Similarly, for a negative edge triggered logic, falling edge of the gating signal should occur when the clock is low. Now let us try to understand the same concept with the help of waveform. So this is the waveform here and you can see that the first waveform is of CLKA. So CLKA means this is your reference waveform. Why is it reference waveform? Because it is coming on this flip-flop which is which is your gating signal flip-flop. So the output of this which is going to the A pin of this wave gating signal is actually the waveform here. So this signal can come after this CLKA has been triggered then only this will be enabled and you have your clock signal on the B pin. So U A and D 0 slash B on that pin your clock signal is coming. So you have to measure your timing with respect to the clock signal. So your required time will be calculated on the basis of this clock signal and your requirement is that your gating signal can change any time before your clock active edge is coming up. So you can see that active edge is this edge. Why? Because it will be active high signal on this flip flop. So we want your nature of the flop to be active high here. So this is your, you can say that this is your active edge, active high signal check. Why? Because there is getting signal of AND. So this is your active high waveform on which we are checking the timing and your gating signal can change any time before it. So the uh, ideally it should change between 5 to 10 that also we will explain later but since it is cha ch uh, changing long before that so that means it will meet the setup timing anyway. Now for reference let us look at the setup timing report here. So this is our setup timing report for this circuit and let us have one circuit copy here to understand this further better. Now you can see that your start point here is UFDFF0 which is this flip flop and your end point is UAND0 that means this is your gate which is the end point. So it will start from here and it will end here. So that is your timing path. Now your clock starts at CLKA at 00. zero. And then it will go for some clock latency is coming. So there is no clock latency. They have mentioned it is an ideal clock, I think. So after that, you have, you have DFF 0 slash CK. This is your start point of this 
flip flop so this is the clock pin and the propagation delay of this flip flop is 0.13 so this is 0.13 nanoseconds after this your timing arc goes here and then it will directly end at und0 slash a pin so slash a1 pin is this at which it is ending so this is the arrival time and then you can see that your capture flop will be with respect to this so you can see that your CLKB starts at 10 that means your one full cycle path and there is after this you have uh, around uh, clock source latency will be zero because it is again ideal clock then CLKB in is the uh, your input delay and then UND A2 A2 is the pin which is this pin so B is mentioned as A2 here and uh, they have not taken setup time also but it could be some units here but let's say it is zero clock getting setup time so that could also be mentioned as library setup time sometimes so that is your required time so required time is in the ideal case it is 10 only that is your clock period so your required time itself is 10 and you have an arrival time of around 0.13 which is very less so why it is very less we have this waveform for reference so you can see that it has changed very early that is why you have enough margin for setup so you can see in the timing report also you that you have enough margin in the setup case in this case now let us look at the hold check for clock gating path so for a clock gating path in the active high clock gating hold check requires that gating signal should change only after the falling edge of the clock why is that because we earlier also have told you that for a positive edge triggered logic your rising edge of the gating signal should occur only during the inactive period of the clock that in case of the waveform also you can see that when your clock is inactive at that time only you want your data to change so that is how you will check for hold hence in the case of hold check your active edge becomes this so you will check hold at this edge now for reference let us look at the timing report also here so this is the timing report in which you can see that your hold will be checked at this edge so your 5 is the reference point for checking the hold let us take the circuit here for reference now you can see that here your start point is UDFF0 again your end point is UDFF UAND0 so again your end point is this you can see that path type is min that is how you know that it is a hold timing report and your path group is clock getting default this indicates that tool has created one clock gate enable path so this is how you will know that it is a CG path or clock gate path so this is a hold type report for this and you can see that your arrival time is here after that your required time starts so you will see that again your clock starts from CLKA that is your start point and there was only a flip flop here which has 0.13 PS so that is why you have only 0.13 PS in the arrival time case that is your total 0.13 PS now you can see that your CLKB will be falling at 5 so let's take your waveform here for reference here is the waveform for reference so you can see that in this waveform this is the hold active hold window and you can see that CLKB will be checked at 5 so that is why this is the reference here so it will start at this and we have to check at this edge for clock getting hold path now falling edge is 5 after that your clock latency will be zero because this is ideal case and you will have ideally nothing so it will directly reach to this pin so that means your required time is actually 5 and you have arrival time as 0 0.13 and in the case of hold what you need to check is your arrival time should be greater than required time that is the case of hold for this you can check the previous video also for the hold check how do we check hold is minimum you should have delay in the data path 
such that it is at least greater than 5. But you can see that your delay is very less. So at least greater than 5 means at least your data should have been occurring. That change should have been occurring after this. So this should be brought here. And that is why this is violating. So in this case, you can clearly see that hold is violating. So the requirement is at least your data change should happen in the active low window. So this is how we come to know that your data change should happen at during the inactive period of the clock and clock is inactive during 5 to 10. Now one can see that hold requirement is quite large and that is caused by the fact that sense of the gating signal and the flip flop being gated are same and how to resolve this we will see that in the next video that's all for this one and please like share and subscribe to the channel please give your important feedback in the comment section thank you